Hi everyone, this is Nia and today I'll be painting a front porch garden which was inspired by a photo that I found. I really love the features of the door and the window with all the plants in this composition and I really wanted to paint my own version. I'm going to begin by sketching it out straight away so I could fit the composition within the paper size that I have. This is an A5 and I want the painting to be a bit larger so I enlarged the door, windows and plants which means that there would be less space around these main features. Like usual when I'm using a reference, I'm not going to copy accurately but I just want to make sure that the elements that I like are in the composition so it can be quite flexible. I'll add pots or change up the shape of the plants or you can also change the color of the pots and even change the main features of the door or the window if you would like and make your own interpretation. I actually like the door here already and the window so I'm keeping most of the elements but I just want to make sure that everything fits nicely in this page. As an example here, I already know what the pattern of the stone formation is more or less like around this door. So instead of looking at each brick stone from the reference image one by one, I just sketch out my own to fit my own composition. I also changed the shape of the front porch lamp here. I actually sketched out two because I thought that it would be nicer to have the light on both sides of the door but then I realized that it would shift the placement of the window on the left and I don't want the risk of the window to be off the frame when I sketch it out later. I could also make the whole door smaller in the composition but I didn't want to have to erase and start everything over again so I ended up just sticking with one light and I erased the one on the left eventually. My main mistake here is that I didn't sketch the overall composition before drawing on the details so what I should have done is to draw the window and the door very roughly before adding the details like the bricks, pots and things like that so if I were to resize or shift the main features it'll be much easier to do so. That's just something to keep in mind if you're going to sketch out a larger composition. But anyway, I'm going to add on the elements one by one here. I'm going to leave most of the plants out though because I'm painting them freehand later, but you can draw yours out if you want to include specific plants or pots. And sketching it out will just help you remember which plant goes to which pot when you're painting it. But yeah, I'll get back to you again once I'm ready to paint. And like usual, this outline will also be available in my coffee shop so if you just want to trace and paint or color it in you can also do that Here I just want to quickly show you how I sketch out the plants. I just want to roughly remind myself when I paint later on how I want the plants to drape down the pots or hang down the pots, but I left ones where I feel that just be quite static or wouldn't affect the dynamic of the composition. Next here are the colors that I'll be using. Firstly, this is Aquarius Green by Ramesh Mal, Sap Green by Holbein, Azo Yellow by Amgram, Quinciana by Daniel Smith, Yellow Ochre by Holbein, Buff Titanium by Daniel Smith, Paints Grey Bluish by Schminka, and Azure Blue by White Knights. I'll also be using Bleed Proof White by Dr. PH Martins, and my Sakura Micron Pen 0.1 in Sepia. 
Like usual, I like to begin by painting the plants first. So I'm going to use a mix of sap green and azo yellow to create a yellow green. And I'm going to paint dust, suggesting leaves draping down this pot. Then for the darker areas, I use a mix of sap green, paint gray bluish, and a little bit of quinciana to mute the color. I just alternate between these two tones of greens and clumps. The light green just shows the lighter parts of the plants, whereas the darker tone shows the leaves in shadow. Because we have so many plants to paint, I like to play between these colors so the plants look a little bit different from each other. So for this next pot, though I'm still going to paint them the same way, I made the green look a little bit more earthy by adding more yellow and quinciana in the mixture. But just like before, to darken it, I would just add a little bit more paint scree bluish. You can also use single colors to paint greeneries, so here I use sap green in a thin consistency to paint the light tone and as for the darker tone, I just use a thicker consistency of sap green. So if you would like, if you have a lot of different tones of greens on your palette, say olive green, terra verde, cobalt green and so on, you can also use them individually for varied tones. Personally, I like mixing my greens, so I'm just going to play around and alternate between the different ratios to paint these plants. But feel free to take advantage of the colors that you have at home, and you can even add flowers if you would like to, so you can add different hues for a more colorful composition. Next, I'm going to be painting the pots. I'm going to treat it the same way as how I paint the greeneries by alternating the different ratios. For the first one, you may notice that I use a mixture of quinciana with a little bit of azo yellow to create an orange. For the second one, I add a little bit of paints gray bluish to mute the color and create more of a brown color. And to lighten it, I use buff titanium in the mix. I'm going to be alternating between these three colors in different ratios in order to get mostly of an orange, brown, or a creamy colored pot. And I'm going to keep the tone fairly consistent all throughout this composition. However, if you would like to, you can also paint colorful pots by using different hues or even draw on different designs for the pots. I personally want to keep the colors fairly similar and consistent because there's a lot going on in this composition already. But of course, this is just my personal choice. Feel free to experiment with yours. With the rest of the plants, I like to not only play with the greens, but I like to also play with the shape and textures. I'm keeping everything fairly simple though because as I mentioned, there's already a lot going on here. So I just want to think about different silhouettes so they don't all look completely the same. If you want a neater approach though, you can actually make them into similar shaped bushes as well. It'll just have a different feel for the overall painting. Either way though, I think it'll look cute. For this small roof area, I use the orange mix from the pots and then I use a thick consistency of dark green. This can be from any mixtures you have and I use it to paint behind those plants. For the plank underneath, I use a mix of buff titanium with yellow ochre and I use a dark brown mix to paint the shadows underneath the roof tiles. You can see from this plant that I'm painting here, the greens has a cooler or bluish tone. This is because it has a high ratio of paint gray bluish and I use a thin consistency for the light parts and a thicker consistency for the darks. You can see from the reference image that there are leaves growing next to the bricks around the door. I'm going to treat this one differently. In terms of the green, you can use any mixture, but I actually want to paint single leaves here. It doesn't have to be super accurate or clear, but I just want this to look different than the rest, so the leaves here look a little bit larger compared to the other plants that I've painted so far. After that, I'm going to use a darker tone of green to paint in between the lighter leaves so it looks like the leaves are placed behind the ones that I painted earlier and then follow this up with an even darker tone of green to fill in some of the larger gaps.
For the leafy area here, I'm going to treat it the same way as how I painted the left side, but I just want the shape of the overall silhouette to be slightly different. For the pots, I forgot to mention before, but sometimes I like to also mix in yellow ochre to be part of the color mixture. I'd use it the same way as the other colors to either create an orange, brown, or creamy color. For something more orange, I would use more quinciana in the mix, which I actually use as the base of most of the brown mixtures. Paints gray bluish to darken and mute the color, buff titanium for something a bit more creamy, and the yellow ochre can be an alternate to azo yellow to make the colors look more bronze or golden. Once I'm done painting the plants and pots, I'm going to start painting the other elements. I'm starting with this tree on the right. I used a mix of quinciana paint gray bluish with a little bit of yellow ochre, and I'm starting with a medium consistency. Then I'm going to follow this up using a thick consistency of the same mix for the left side of the tree trunk and branch to give this tree some shadow and form. For this horizontal line, I used a mixture of buff titanium with a little bit of azure blue. And as for the vertical lines that I'm painting right now, I used azure blue with a little bit of paint gray. Next, I'm going to paint the brick arch on top of the window. I'm going to use mostly quinciana for the orangey brick color. Then I alternate the colors between a mixture of paints gray, bluish yellow ochre, and buff titanium with the quinciana, so there are different hues to the small area. After I painted the bricks, I'm also going to paint the stones around the door. I want the stones to be light, so I use buff titanium as the base. Sometimes I use it by itself, and sometimes I mix it with yellow ochre and quinciana to paint more of an orangey tone and a light consistency. And if I want the color to be a bit more brown, I would add paint gray bluish in varying ratios, so some stones might even have a light blue tone to it. For a slightly darker value, I just increase the consistency and for the stones on top of the door, I use a mixture of quinciana with paints gray bluish in a light consistency to paint the shadow. You may also notice that I switched to a small flat brush here. This is optional, I just find that it's a bit faster to paint using this, but if you don't have one, you can stick with your round brush. For the door handle, I used yellow ochre by itself in a thick consistency, and as for the door itself, I used a mixture of paint gray bluish with quinciana in order to get this muted brown tone, and I just paint the base color of the door using a medium consistency. I'm going to use the same color mixture to paint the shadows in between those stones, but I added more paint gray bluish in order to mute the color further, and I also switched to my liner brush in order to reach those tiny spaces. After I've painted the base color, then I go back in with a slightly thicker consistency, and I paint on some of the spaces, but I left some with the base color showing, so there are varying shades of shadows instead of it looking like an outline. For the glass in the door, I used a mixture of azure blue with buff titanium and I'm just going to do a flat wash for now using a fairly thin consistency. And while the surface is still wet, I use a mixture of paint gray bluish with azure blue and I just paint random wavy diagonal lines to represent the shadows or reflection from the plants. For the fence here, I used a thin consistency of quinciana, yellow ochre, and buff titanium, but I felt like it was still too dark for my liking. If I were to change something, I would actually prefer for the fence to be lighter, but if you paint your own version, this is completely up to you. For the lamp, I used a thick consistency of paint gray bluish with quinciana, but you can also use lamp black. And as for the glass on the lamp, I use azure blue and buff titanium, then I just wait for it to dry before I paint on the lines in between. 
For the bricks on the stairs, I used the same color mixtures as what I used for the arch on top of the window and I also changed up the tones very subtly and left out some space in between to paint later. As for the top side of the bricks, I use one color mixture of quinciana, paints gray bluish and a touch of yellow ochre and I'm just going to do a flat wash on top of the rectangles that I painted earlier. For the door here, I actually just used the same mix to go over the base color again, but I left out the rectangle at the bottom and also a light frame around the door. I also used the same color to paint on the lines to section out the glass portion of the door. After that, while I have the same mixture on my palette, I just use it to line the lights, the fence, and also the top side of the bricks for the stairs. For the lines on the bricks, I want the lines to go towards the door to follow the perspective of the painting. For the color of the window, I use a mixture of paints gray bluish with a little bit of azure blue, but I like to add on a little bit of quinciana here and there for a touch of warmer tones. While I wait for the window to dry, I'm just going to paint the rest of the painting using buff titanium in a medium consistency. That's basically for the wall and the window shades. As I get towards the right side of the wall, I mix in a thin consistency of a mixture of paints gray bluish with azure blue. This is just to make those parts a little bit cooler in tone. Using the same color, I'm also going to start adding on some shadows underneath the pots and also certain ledges. I also like to vary the shade of the shadow, so sometimes for a warmer tone of shadow, I would add some quinciana, and for a more cooler tone, I'd use the paints gray bluish. Another mistake that I made for this painting is adding too much shadow on this portion of the composition. I feel like there's already a lot going on so I shouldn't really need to add any more textures from the shadows on this area and I just find that the composition looks better at this stage without the shadows so keep that in mind for your painting. I also didn't realize this when I was in the middle of painting it, which is why I just kept on going, but I'm just going to add on more textures for the window shades. I just added lines using a mixture of quinciana with paints gray bluish, and I'm also going to add some shadows very lightly for the pots going towards us. This is where I divided the brick lines for the arch on the window. I used bleed proof white and then I also go over the color again to increase the vibrancy but it's up to you how light or dark you want the bricks to be for your own painting. So the bricks doesn't look like they're completely flat on the wall. I also decided to line some shadows. Using bleed proof white again, I'm just lining the window frame and I'm also going to add some outlines for added detail. 
At this point, I'm just adding on more pigments to increase the vibrancy of the overall painting as well as figuring out the shadows and overall values. Once I'm done, I'm just going to add outlines to some of the pots, plants, and other elements which has light colors with my ink pen. As for the plants, I only want to add limited lines so it doesn't look too cartoony. And that's basically it for this painting. I really enjoyed painting all the potted plants, but I feel like I really need to work on figuring out the shadow placement. Either way, I hope you guys also enjoyed this one. Like usual, all the list of tools as well as my social media links will be in my description box. If you're still here, thank you so much for watching till the end, and I'll see you at the next one. Bye!